Hey everybody, it's Nate from Explorers.life. I teach people how to build DIY campers. And in this video, I'm going to teach you what wattage of solar panel is best for your DIY camper electrical system. Now this video is episode number 21 in a series of videos where I teach you all the basic electrical skills and concepts that you'll need to be able to tackle the next electrical project in your camper. So about a year ago, I made a video that taught you how to perform a power audit. And in that power audit, you not only found out how many amp hours of battery capacity you needed to power your daily electrical needs, but you also determined a solar array wattage goal. And a refresher on that is this. Your daily power consumption in amp hours at 12 volts times two is your solar array wattage goal. So for example, if you were going to be using 300 amp hours at 12 volts of battery bank capacity, it would take about 600 watts of solar panels to refill those 300 amp hours of batteries in the US solar average production time of six hours a day. So now that you know how many watts of solar panels you need, let's learn how to figure out the best way to break the solar array up into its individual panels. So the best size of individual solar panel is it really doesn't matter. There's not a best size, but here's what does matter. What matters is the wattage of the overall solar array, which means that your array wattage should be at least your solar wattage goal for best performance, and the voltage of the solar array, which means that your array voltage should be at least 20 volts over your battery bank voltage for best MPPT charge controller performance. And that's really it. As long as those two metrics are met, the size of the individual solar panels doesn't really matter that much. So here's an example. Let's say that we plan on using about 150 amp hours of battery bank capacity, which means our solar goal would need to be 300 watts. So we need to decide between three 100 watt solar panels wired in series versus one 300 watt solar panel. Now, both of these arrays would operate at the desired battery bank charging voltage plus 20 volts for optimal MPPT charge controller performance, and they would both meet our needs of our solar array wattage goal. Now their performance would be very similar. The three 100 watt panels may have ever so slightly better performance since the voltage is a bit higher and will start charging a little bit earlier in the day, but the difference will likely be very small given that both arrays do have the desired battery bank charging voltage plus 20 volts, which is about 35 volts for a 12 volt battery bank. So I hate making videos where the answer is, it really doesn't matter, but that's truly at the basic level what the answer is here. Use solar panels that will reach your solar array wattage goal in a manner that will provide an array voltage of at least 20 volts over your battery bank charging voltage. Now, I have a list of commonly used solar panels on the Explorer's Life blog that can be sorted by their wattage, their physical dimensions, uh, their watts per square foot, their open circuit voltage, and their open circuit amperage. So when trying to design your solar array, I really think this is going to be helpful. And I know that I use it nearly every day inside of my private group when I'm helping people design their camper electrical systems in a more one-on-one -on -one fashion. So when somebody is starting from scratch on their camper solar array setup, I usually just point them towards that list and have them figure out how many of what size of panels will fit on their camper roof and go from there. Knowing what we know about wiring different sizes of solar panels in the same array and using multiple charge controllers means that if the goal is maximum solar coverage on a camper roof, we can really use nearly every inch of roof real estate for our camper solar goals without focusing so much on the individual panel wattage. Now that we've covered the best or lack thereof wattage of solar panels, next we need to talk about the best size of panel in physical dimensions. So next week, I'm going to teach you how to draw a blueprint of your roof so that you can best determine the best physical size of solar panels for your specific roof, taking roof vents, air conditioners, antennas, and other stuff like that into consideration. Now, I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, it'd be awesome if you'd share it with somebody or a group who you think could use it. Hit the like button and leave any questions you've got or new things you learned in the comment section below. Subscribe if you want to see more DIY camper building tutorials and I will see you in the next video.